Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to look over some of the interfaces provided by the java.util.function package. So we've already seen a couple of these. We've seen, for example, the predicate, and we've seen the consumer. We know that the predicate, it returns either true or false, and that's used whenever we might want to filter something, for example. So over here, let me format this again. We can, let's see here. So we're filtering based on the predicate that the name has to equal Willy. That's, that's our condition. And then we're looping through it using a consumer. So what a consumer does is it just has a function called accept, and that accept function has one parameter. And then we can do whatever we need to with one parameter, but we can't actually return any values like we can with a predicate. So similarly, we also have the supplier class and or the supplier interface. And then we have one more, we have the supplier, and then we have the function. So where is the function just by itself? Well, okay, so I guess, yeah, you have the function right here, oh, there it is. So you have the function. So the function, it's exactly like it is in math or in the functions we write. A function, it takes in a value and then it returns some kind of value. Whereas a supplier, it doesn't take in any value, but it returns some value. So now these are pretty straightforward, but what are all these, what are these by consumers and by functions and by predicates, what do they mean? Well, these are useful when you have two parameters, when you have maybe like a key and a value, and then you might need to return a value. So in by function, we see that we're being passed in two values, and then we're returning a value. By consumer, it takes in two values, and by predicate, it also takes in two values. So to see a good example of this, let's Instead of working with array lists, let's use a hash map. So our hash map is going to have uh, integers as keys and strings as values. Or we can even do this. Let's be a little more clever. Let's use we can put persons in there, and then we can say map is equal to new hash map, and then we can put let's see here our key could be zero, and then we would put. Um, Person and it would be two and then finally key three. And now if we wanted to go through every single item inside of our hash map, we could just do this. Map not for each. And now we're gonna define a by consumer. Well a by consumer, all it is, it's a lambda expression that accepts two parameters, a key and a value. So the key, we can make this a little more explicit, is going to be a type integer. And then the, let's see here, the value is going to be a type person. And then we can just print out the value. And that's it. And let me get rid of this semicolon right there, and this will work. Okay, so let's see here. Can we make this a little formatting a little better here? Let's put this in braces. And by the way, if you have a lambda expression, you can always wrap in, and you have to do multiple things inside of the lambda expression, you can always just wrap it inside of braces, and that's going to let you do multiple things inside of it. Okay, so now that we see that the key is an integer and the person is the value, we can either keep these type qualifiers to make it easy to read the code, or we can get rid of them. Either way works. But for our purposes, we see that we're just printing out each value. In this case, each person, we're we're going to get random data because we're printing out, we're trying to print out each person, but we haven't overridden the two string method in each person class. So the best approach is to just print out their names. And so now we run it and we see that their names are Willie, Sammy, and Jeffy. Okay, so similarly, I mean, it works the same way. If we have a by predicate, we can do this. So what we can do is we can just first create a predicate that takes in an engineer. And then it also takes in a person. And then we're going to let's just call this person test. And then what we can say is that this predicate is going to, let me just write it out here. It's going to take the person's age. And if the person is less than 50 and the key is less than one, then we're going to return true. And that's it. 
So then what we can do is then we can do if person test dot test using a key of one and then p2, we're just going to print out otherwise we're going to say that the predicate failed the test. So notice that we don't have a return statement here. But why is that? If we were to create a predicate using our anonymous inner class syntax, right, we would get something like this. Notice that when we do do this, when we use the anonymous inner syntax, right, we have to return a value. So it would look something like this. Um, in this case, it would be called u, but you guys get the idea. Well, we don't have we don't have to return a value when we're using our predicate because it, in the lambda expression it automatically kind of wraps this all for us. The predicate is just expecting some kind of boolean output, and this is the boolean output we're providing, and so it just works naturally. So let's get rid of this guy right here and let's test out our program now. Um, that took a while, and then we failed the test because let's see here k has to be greater than 1, so let's put 3 in there, and then let's hear the person's age has to be less than 50, so this time we should pass it. So this time we passed it. Okay, so I encourage you guys to look through these functions. Some of them you probably will never use, but these are pretty useful. Uh, this, you're going to be using the predicate quite a bit when you're filtering data, you're going to be using the consumer a lot when you're working with maybe asynchronous operations. So this pretty much wraps up this video for Lambda Expressions. I'll see you guys in the next one.